First big thing I want to get into that I think is going to be a lot of fun outside of all the other stuff we're going to discuss. I want to talk about Star Wars games that are must plays. I want to talk about Star Wars games that are some of the best out there or some of the most recommended that I could put out there to you guys that I feel like every fan of Star Wars, whether you're a big gamer or not a big gamer or just a casual Star Wars fan, these are the games that you need to check out. Now, let's be real, Star Wars fans, because I know there's a bunch of you out there. This isn't the top 10 or top 5 of all time. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other games I could probably put into this conversation. And I've actually talked about some of this stuff in various different places, like TikTok, like YouTube, like Twitter. Which, by the way, if you're not following me on any of those platforms, you need to do so. There's links down below in the description box. I'm just saying, Star Wars fans, check it out when you can. But these are five games that for Star Wars Podcast Day, I can recommend to everybody because these are great games in various different ways, whether it's great gameplay, great story stuff, awesome Star Wars related adaptations or anything else that I feel like all Star Wars fans need to check out when you can. And as someone who has played these games multiple times, has talked about them multiple times, has talked about them in relation to other Star Wars games in multiple different instances, I think I'm more than certified to actually talk about this. Again, Star Wars fans, if you want to talk about Star Wars video games or you want to know about Star Wars games or anything gaming related as regards to Star Wars fandom or the community, your man right here has got you covered. So first one we have to talk about is this bad boy right here. Boom! Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, the game. This is a phenomenal game that if you haven't played already or if you didn't grow up during the time frame when Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith was coming out, you need to check this out. Now, specifically, the PlayStation 2 version or the Xbox version, whichever one have you, this game is something that everybody needs to check out when they can. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith is one of the better Star Wars video games that adapts one of the actual movies. There's been a couple here and there. (laughs) <laughs> We've had games like The Phantom Menace, which have came out recently on the PlayStation Plus collection for premium subscribers, where you actually get to play through the events of The Phantom Menace. Uh, we've also had other games here and there that have adapted stuff, including Attack of the Clones as well. But Revenge of the Sith, specifically Revenge of the Sith, is the one that I feel like on consoles is the most fun to play for various different reasons. You see, the thing about Revenge of the Sith is that not only do you get to play as both Anakin and Obi-Wan, but you also get to do a variety of different things outside of fighting droids and all the Confederate army. You get to experience Order 66. You get to actually have the big duel on Mustafar between Anakin and Obi-Wan. And on top of that, you also get to have both perspectives of that fight, including an alternate ending, which is infamous for many Star Wars fans out there. You know that ending. You know what I'm talking about. Exactly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go play the game. Go look it up so that way I don't spoil it here for you. Everybody knows this, but if you don't know it, go find out. I've even talked about this in my review of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. I have a review video here on the channel right now. Go watch it after this podcast episode, of course. The point is, though, is that as far as adapting a Star Wars movie or some sort of Star Wars media into video game form, this is, in my opinion, one of the best. Granted, it's not the best for the franchise as far as Star Wars as a whole, but when it comes to a movie, Revenge of the Sith, this is what was the best option that we had back in the day. And keep in mind, too, I shouldn't mention as well, because this game is infamous for this. This came out before the movie. Most Star Wars games that were based on any of the prequels ended up coming out before the release of the movie. So we kind of got like a little, <coughs> I guess you could say, inside knowledge or inside or insight, I should say, into Revenge of the Sith right before it came out in theaters. So we were all hyped up. This was part of like that hype wave of completing the saga, you know, the final Star Wars movie, quote unquote, which we all came to know eventually wasn't the case. But check it out if you haven't already done so. It's definitely one of those phenomenal games that you need to actually play if you haven't already done so. Number two that we're going to talk about, and again, (coughs) I should mention that none of these games are in descending or any specific order. These are just five games that are must-plays, in my opinion, for any Star Wars fan, long time or just new, okay? This one is a banger, and we have to talk about this, okay? We absolutely have to talk about Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Like, there's just no debate. This is, hands down, the best Star Wars game ever released in multiple different ways. And I know there's a debate for a couple different games that fit that title, but real talk, I mean, 
Knights of the Old Republic, I have multiple copies of this game. I have it on the original Xbox. I have it also on Nintendo Switch. And I have it digital on uh, Steam. Okay? Multiple copies of this game. Why is this game right here, Knights of the Old Republic, such a big deal? A lot of people that are probably just getting into Star Wars games have never really heard about this. Or probably heard about it, but never played it. And don't understand, like, what's the big deal? Like, why is everybody losing their mind over KOTOR? Okay, what is KOTOR? And all that stuff. The bottom line is this. When you take a franchise like Star Wars and you want to actually make some sort of experience in gaming form that allows you to be immersed by it, that allows you to really kind of like walk around and really take in a lot of the stuff that makes Star Wars what it is, this is the best rendition we have to date. We obviously have other games like Battlefront. We have virtual reality games. We have other arcade style games that really play on <coughs> a lot of the fantasy of Star Wars, whether it's becoming a Jedi Knight or a Sith, whether it's going to, uh, what is it, getting into a starship and getting into dogfights, doing the Death Star trench run, exploring like some hidden caverns on some planet within the Star Wars universe, there's all these different things. This one right here really puts you into the shoes of a Star Wars character and has honestly one of the best twists in a story in the Star Wars franchise. Bottom line, that's just a fact. For many different people, especially if you've really experienced this multiple times. It's an RPG by BioWare, allows you to pick both light side and dark side uh, in relation to this story that has a massive twist, that has some of the best, most iconic characters from the Star Wars video game universe that a lot of people really love. I mean, let's just scroll down here. I mean, one of the biggest ones, obviously, is this girl right here, Basil Sean, right here. We have Basil Sean, who is a massive, massive big deal for many people that love Star Wars video games. One of the best female characters in Star Wars, right next to Mara Jade, right next to Rihanna Sarin, right next to Princess Leia, right next to Padme Amidala. The list goes on. For people that have played this game and have loved many of the different characters in here, which we'll see in just a second, Basil Sean is definitely up there on the top list. And it'd be awesome to see you know, at some point, maybe Basil Sean makes some sort of comeback in other games in various forms. It could be like a cameo or something because people love that character for many reasons. I mean, even now, you probably can't see it here, but I have a little Basil Sean figure from Diamond Select Toys. Again, the character's that much of a big deal. So anyway, there's other characters in here that are awesome. Darth Malak, which by the way, if you didn't know, the new Lego sets for a lot of Star Wars stuff that are coming up for, I believe is the 25th anniversary or the 20th anniversary... Uh, the R2-D2 set has a little Darth Malak minifigure, okay? If I had the extra spending cash, I would totally get this just for that figure alone. I would build R2-D2, of course, because we love R2-D2 out here. But that Darth Malak figure, I want it. For real, I really do want it. But anyway, there are other aspects about this game that are just beloved besides the characters. The fact that we get to go to various different planets set about 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, which I think is good for a Star Wars game to not only give us familiar aspects but also give us new places to go explore that we probably heard about in some of the films, that we probably heard about in some of the expanded universe material, like Dantooine. Everybody remembers Dantooine? Princess Leia mentions it during episode 4 of New Hope. We actually get to go to Dantooine and actually do some stuff over there 4,000 years in the past, so it's very different than what it might be during the Galactic Civil War, during the time of the original trilogy. The point is, this game right here is one of the best, if not the best, Star Wars game ever made. And if you haven't played it, I highly recommend that you check it out. It's not perfect. It does have some aspects that could have been improved because, again, it shows its age. And this is the reason why we're getting that remake of Knights of the Old Republic. But it's definitely up there on the must-play list for many people that need to check out this game. Because there's no reason why you should not play Code or Knights of the Old Republic. It's that good. It's that important. It's that awesome. And it definitely has a lot of stuff that you definitely need to explore if you haven't already. Moving on. Well, let's talk about another banger, son. Let's talk about another banger that is just absolutely epic win in so many regards. Because let me tell you something. I've been on the behind of Aspire Games and Lucasfilm Games to get this next game remastered in some form. We should get a remaster of this game. I've been talking about this for years. Years. Okay? Bottom line, Star Wars Rogue Squadron. One of my favorite N64 games of all time. One of my favorite Star Wars games of all time. Star Wars Rogue Squadron is still one of the best action flight or arcade flight games. Period. Okay? The game is so good. 
You not only get to pilot an X-Wing and multiple other starships, you get various different missions set between the events of Episode 4 and Episode 5, and even dabbling in a couple other places, including after Return of the Jedi, during the EU, during the Dark Empire Saga. Anybody read the Dark Empire Saga with the World uh, Devastators? There's a whole bunch of stuff with the first Rogue Squadron game that really gets into that. That's just still to this day a lot of fun to play. Like, it is awesome. It is hands down freaking awesome. And what's crazy too, on top of uh, all the sequels that it spawns, we got Rogue Leader on GameCube. We got Rebel Strike on GameCube as well. And it was also this game and, and really also the X-Wing series was a heavy inspiration for Star Wars Squadrons that we got later on on PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5. <laughs> and also PlayStation VR. The thing is, what makes Rogue Squadron so special, and why I feel like it's the game that people could constantly go back to, is because it's easy to get into, easy to play, and just fun to play for a long period of time. If you've never played Rogue Squadron before, I highly recommend that you do so. Do not, however, do not get it on PC, okay? The main reason why this game right here on PC is not that good is because it has a lot of problems that you need mods in order to fix it up. <laughs> if you just want <clears throat> the straight experience out of the box, you need to play this game on Nintendo 64 the way it was meant to be played, at least in my personal opinion. There are other people that'll disagree with me, saying that, hey, you can still play this on PC, put in a couple mods, you're good to go, it, it looks better, it runs better, and I understand that, we get that, we understand that out here. But if you want the true Rogue Squadron experience, you need to play this on Nintendo 64. It is that good, it is that awesome, it is that much fun to really get into. Now let's move on to number four, or the fourth game I can mention here, which is another classic, absolute classic. We're talking banger that is still a must-play for many different Star Wars gamers out here, okay? Many different Star Wars fans, they swear by this game, and it just so happens to be the 20th anniversary of this series, okay? Let's talk about good old Star Wars Battlefront, and more specifically, the reason why I'm bringing up Star Wars Battlefront 2 Okay, instead of the original Battlefront, it's because Battlefront 2 is obviously the superior game. Now, we're not talking about EA's Battlefront, okay? Obviously, it's there. It's one of the best-looking Star Wars games out there. But people swear by this one right here. They swear by it. It's so good. And it's still beloved and still a whole lot of fun to play, even to this day. I'm on the Wikipedia. has all this stuff on here. There's a couple screenshots of some of the stuff in here as well. Description, everything else. Look, look how long this thing goes. It just keeps going. There's so much information. People love this game. People have dissected this game so much because it is so freaking good. Okay? It has multiple eras of Star Wars. Not just the original trilogy, but it has the Clone Wars as well. This came out around the time of Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, where things were still fresh in everybody's mind from that movie. <coughs> and it was still at the very tail end of the Clone Wars where everybody was really excited about that era of Star Wars. But what makes this game so good is that it's fun to play, easy to get into, endlessly replayable between the instant action, Galactic Conquest, all the CTF stuff, the hunt modes. We got the Galactic Conquest, which has multiple different boards you could actually play through, and it's a build-off of the original Galactic Conquest from the first Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> and finally, also, the Heroes. The heroes are a huge deal, are a huge game changer compared to how it was handled in the original Battlefront. And the reason why is because in the first Battlefront game, you could not play as the heroes. You could not actually use them uh, for many different reasons. The whole idea and the whole philosophy behind Star Wars Battlefront was to be a trooper on the battlefield, not play as any one of the characters that we know, but influence the battles as a trooper, whether it was on the Galactic Empire side, the Rebel Alliance, the clones for the Republic, or the CIS as the droids. Bottom line, you were playing these games to be on the battlefield. And once the first game was successful, people loved it. They wanted things to go bigger and better. And then on top of that, on top of playing as the heroes, which we have a collection of heroes, which is awesome. Between both versions of these games, by the way, you're looking at me here, PlayStation 2 version, Xbox uh, original version. This one actually has more content than this one here. It actually has more heroes and more maps, which is a big deal. But on top of that, we also had the space battles. The space battles were obviously fan-freaking-tastic. They were so good. And the reason why they were so good is because you could actually go between two capital ships, try to mess up your opponent's capital ship, the opposing force, try to take it down by taking out some of its systems, life support, shields, turrets, all this stuff. Pilot a different starfighter or an actual transport to bring your troopers into their ship. It was a whole lot of fun. 
Battlefront 2 still remains to this day as one of the best Star Wars games out there. Right next to Knights of the Old Republic, there's a big debate between a lot of people between Battlefront 2 or Battlefront in general and the Knights of the Old Republic series. And they're great and they're important for many different reasons between the both of them. They are fantastic, obviously must play games, but Battlefront 2, yo... Again, I have multiple copies of this. I have it on these two platforms. I have it on PC, on Steam. I have it all over the place. I even have the PSP version. There was a PSP version of Battlefront 2, which had its own stuff. Even though it wasn't the best place to actually play this game, it had its issues with controls and stuff on the PSP, but it had its own exclusive modes on top of that. Like, people love Battlefront 2. So if you haven't played it yet, do yourself a favor. Go on Steam on your PC. Hit up that Steam sale. Buy it for like two bucks and play it. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You can't get any more of a big recommendation from me than that. As someone that plays a lot of Star Wars games, that has played so many Star Wars games, probably almost nearly every Star Wars game that has been released to date, I cannot tell you that I cannot recommend Battlefront 2 Classic enough. You need to play it. Let me know your thoughts about that down below in the comments section because I'm telling you, Star Wars Battlefront 2 is that good. But of course, we're not done yet. Last but not least, this game right here, right? Mm. <clears throat> I can't leave you guys without one more uh, game to recommend. And one that's recent, too, that actually just won a Grammy, okay? Just won a Grammy for Best Video Game Soundtrack, or Best Soundtrack for a Video Game. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Of course, we got to talk about this, bad boy. We got we to gotta talk about this, okay? Star Wars Jedi Survivor, uh, an absolute fantastic game. It had a little bit of a rough launch, right? <coughs> a little rough, <clears throat> with its launch but it was still fantastic when you got into it battlefront i mean uh what is it star wars jedi survivor was fantastic <coughs> excuse me a coughing we got cameron monaghan as cal kestis once again coming off of jedi fallen order which was fantastic in its own right the only reason why we are highlighting <coughs> we are highlighting jedi survivor over Jedi Fallen Order is because I feel as a whole, like looking at both these games, having reviewed both of them, played them both extensively, Jedi Fallen Order may have the better story, the better introduction of Cal Kestis, the better introduction of some of these characters set within this time period of Star Wars just after Revenge of the Sith, but the better gameplay is for Jedi Survivor, okay? Bottom line, Jedi Fallen Order had the better story, Better Jedi Survivor has the better gameplay. And I really truly believe that. I find that this game is fantastic because we got multiple planets to explore. We have more special moves and more different like branching paths of how to level up Cal Kestis. We have multiple lightsabers, multiple outfits and stuff. We got BD-1 with us, our boy BD-1. Okay, the little droid over here. I'll even show you guys. I don't know if you can see it up there. I gotta go right. He's right, he's right over here. You see? Little Lego BD-1 that I built. There from the Lego set from Jedi Fallen Order, by the way. They need a Jedi Survivor variant. They need to release one. But I'm just saying, we got our boy BD-1 there. Okay, on top of that. <laughs> but the big thing with Jedi Survivor, multiple planets, bigger story, uh, crazy battles overall. <clears throat> crazy battles overall, okay? And a lot of bigger and better things that what we initially got from Jedi Fallen Order just were expanded upon with Jedi Survivor. I think that this is a game that is fantastic as far as new Star Wars games are concerned. I think Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor are two of the best of the modern era for Star Wars games, which meaning the EA era uh, around the time when they had the exclusivity deal or exclusivity agreement for Star Wars games, okay, before we now got more new stuff that's coming down the line, which we'll get into in just a bit. But overall, I cannot... <coughs> oh my God, coughing so much. Because my throat is dry, like, talking about all this stuff. You see what, what I go through for you guys to talk about Star Wars games? Mm. I, all the, the, the kind of goofy stuff or whatever, right? Bottom line, I can't recommend Star Wars Jedi Survivor enough. Because as far as brand new Star Wars games are concerned, it has everything. It has a great story, has interesting characters, has all the battles that you go on as far as being a Jedi Knight with lightsabers, as well as also implementing elements of other Star Wars eras. Jedi Fallen Order was just coming off of the Clone Wars, and there was a couple things about the Clone Wars there off the heels of Revenge of the Sith and Order 66. But with Jedi Survivor, we got other things that are getting implemented into it as well. We got, obviously, the Galactic Civil War, which is starting to kind of, you know, 
be kind of like at the very starting point of it with the Galactic Empire coming to its power and really dominating the galaxy. But then we also got the fallout of the Clone Wars. There are droids in here that are being used by different factions. The Battle Droids, B1s, the Super Battle Droids. We got other things as well of various races that are coming into play. But then on top of that, even though I'm not a huge fan of the High Republic, I will say that it's interesting to see elements of the High Republic get interject interjected into Jedi Survivor, where we're exploring these caverns that have been around for like a couple hundred years, that Cal could actually find out different things about the Jedi Order, or just things or elements about the Force. Stuff like that I find is interesting, because it really builds out the universe, and really starts to make things very more, uh, much more layered and complex for a character that we thought we already had a handling on the universe, and it just makes it much more interesting. I will say, however... <coughs> I will say, however, I do wish that the elements of the High Republic were a little bit much more of a bigger factor playing into some of the elements of the plot and the main plot, right? Because we do have Dagon Guerra, who is a Jedi from the High Republic era that fi somehow finds himself, without spoiling, in the area that Cal Kestis is part of, but it still wasn't that much more impactful as much as I would have liked it to. It was interesting to see that as part of it, and I was like really hoping we get to see other elements get interjected from what's going on current day from the stuff that was in the High Republic, but it's cool to see that. I also do believe that, at least with that game, with the High Republic elements, that they should have also maybe detailed other elements or other details about the High Republic for people that haven't read those books. Because remember, there's a lot of books and comic books that are related to the High Republic. Who knows, maybe Star Wars Eclipse might kind of get me more on board with that era. But the point is, though, you're getting all that stuff in this game that's brand new, that has all the elements that you could want from a Star Wars game. So there you go. Those are five must-play Star Wars games for everybody out there. You need to play these games right now if you haven't already done so. Again, running through them again just for as a recap. Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith, the game. You can find that online, I believe, on PSN or on a PC, if I'm not mistaken. Again, you can find it in multiple places, but go check it out when you can, however you can. Star Wars Co uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1. The original Knights of the Old Republic, absolute banger of a classic. One of the best Star Wars games ever made. You can find it in multiple platforms as well. Steam, PC. You can find it on Xbox, on Xbox, uh, was it, uh, Xbox Live Store, I believe as well, the original version. But you could get it in multiple places now. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. You can find it on PC and also N64. Get the N64 version and play that if you can. Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic from 2005. Absolute banger classic of a Star Wars game. If you haven't played it, there is multiple places that you can play this game. I wish it was remastered, but if you have to play it right now, go get it on Steam. It is still one of the best Star Wars games of all time. And finally, Star Wars Jedi Survivor from Respawn Entertainment. Available in multiple places. I played it on PlayStation 5 and also on Xbox Series X. It's an awesome game. Cannot recommend it enough. Those are five must-plays of Star Wars games. For all of you Star Wars fans out there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that for Star Wars Podcast Day. Because there's a lot in there. But we're not done yet. Okay, we're not done yet. Let me know some of your thoughts about all the games I talked about in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And make sure you go follow me on social media if you guys want to keep talking about any of those Star Wars games that I mentioned. But we are not done yet. Like I just said. We got a lot more stuff to talk about.